I'm a dentist and while I usually don't recommend xylitol to my patients, I use it myself because I like its mechanism of action in terms of protecting teeth. And recently a few people started asking if it could increase the risk of heart disease. And not many people are talking about it, but the study behind the concern got published in a major journal. Now, I look at the research myself uh, because if there's something that we once thought was safe but now isn't, I really want to know the truth. Now before we get into the heart concerns, let's just clear something up. So xanatol isn't some new chemical, it's actually a naturally occurring sugar alcohol. So you'll find it in small amounts in things like berries, mushrooms, oats, and even in our bodies. But the xanatol used in gum or toothpaste, that's usually made from birch wood or corn cobs, and it's been used safely in food and dental products for decades. Now chemically, it tastes sweet, like sugar, but your body can't metabolize it the same way. So it doesn't cause like that sharp blood sugar spike, and more importantly, for us dentists, uh, the bacteria that cause cavities, the ones called Streptococcus mutans, can't ferment it. In other words, they can't use it for fuel. So when you choose xylitol gum, two helpful things happen. The first thing is it stimulates saliva, which basically helps neutralize acids and restore the pH balance. And the second important thing is it disrupts the bacterial metabolism, especially in the acid-producing strains like Streptococcus mutans. And over time, this reduces their ability to colonize and form plaque. So for a long time, xylitol has been seen as this like safe sweetener, especially in the dental world. We've used it in gum, mint, sprays. It's been around for decades, low glycemic, cavity fighting, doesn't feed mouth bacteria. But recently, I've been seeing more people question it, not just on blogs or social media, but actual medical discussions. And there's this like new wave of concern, not necessarily about cavities or digestion, but more about heart health. And it started out with a study that came out of a major journal, the European Heart uh, Journal to be specific. And I've linked this down below if you want to have a further read. But basically what the researchers found was that uh, people who had higher levels of xylitol in their blood also had a higher risk of cardiovascular events. And we're talking about things like stroke, heart health, blood clots, that sort of thing. Now, let me pause for a second here, and I don't want this to be misunderstood. So they weren't saying specifically that people who were chewing xylitol gum after lunch uh, are going to have a heart attack. That's not what the study was claiming. But it did raise a flag, the kind of uh, flag that gets picked up in headlines, especially because not too long ago, there was a similar concern about erythritol, which is another sugar alcohol that a lot of people thought was completely safe. So naturally, this got people asking, is xylitol the same? Should I be worried? And before we jump into conclusions here, we got to look at how the study was actually done, uh, what they actually found, what they didn't find, who the people were in the study, because all of that matters. And that's what I wanted you to walk through. So let's break this down together, what the research found, how strong the evidence really was, and whether it changes anything about how we use xylitol in our daily life. All right, so let's take a look at what this study really did and what it actually found. Now, this study was published in the European Heart Journal, which is one of the major peer-reviewed medical journals. And I've dropped the link down below again if you want to have a read through it. So the researchers tracked over 3,000 uh, people and measured hundreds of different compounds in their blood using something called untargeted metabolics, which basically means a blood chemical scan. Now, they weren't looking for xylitol specifically. They were scanning for everything, and xylitol happened to be one of those compounds that stood out. And here's the key. They didn't ask how much uh, xylitol people were eating. There was no surveys, no food diaries. They simply measured blood levels of xylitol at the time. And then they followed the participants over several years to see who developed cardiovascular events. So the things like heart attacks, the strokes, blood clots. And what they found was that people with higher levels of xylitol in their blood were more likely to develop these cardiovascular events. And that's the part that made the headlines. Now we need to ask this obvious question. Does that mean xylitol caused heart problems? Not necessarily, because, and this is important, your body can also naturally make xylitol through something called the pentose phosphate pathway, which basically becomes more active in people with insulin resistance, diabetes, and other metabolic functions. And there's also another great study on that I've linked down in the description if you want to have a further read. So um, higher blood xylitol does not mean someone was chewing xylitol gum all day. It might mean that their body was under stress metabolically. And the authors in the study themselves admitted that they couldn't tell whether the xylitol was from food, supplements, or internal production. So the elevated levels could be a marker, not necessarily the cause. And alongside observational data, the researchers ran some experiments in the lab. And this is the part that made people raise their eyebrows. They took human platelets, which are basically the cells responsible helping your blood clot, um, and exposed them to xylitol in vitro. This means not living in a body, in a petri dish. And that's what they found that was interesting. The platelets became more sticky. They started clumping together more easily, which could in theory mean that could increase the risk of clot formation. 
And that was proposed as a possible mechanism that might explain the cardiovascular risk signal they observed in people with high xylitol levels in their blood. Now, let's put this into context. First, this wasn't done in a human body. It was in vitro, which lacks the complexity of digestion, metabolism, liver filtering, and so on. And the second thing is the concentration of xylitol used was much higher than what you'd get from chewing gum or sucking on mint. And this was actually also noted in the methods section of the study. So while this gives us a potential clue, it's still very early stage science. It's a bit like testing how a raw ingredient behaves in a lab and assuming it'll act the same way once it's been fully cooked in a dish. And it's useful, it's interesting, but it's not the full story. So yes, the combination of blood associations and lab findings deserves a follow-up, but can we say that xylitol causes blood clots in real life? Now, something that didn't make it into the headlines, but it's actually one of the most important details is who was in the study? Because this wasn't done on young, healthy people with no health problems. The majority of the participants were already high risk. We're talking people with obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and a history of cardiovascular disease. And that matters a lot because these are the same kinds of people who are more likely to have metabolic dysfunction. And that's the exact condition where your body might start to produce more xylitol internally through the pentose phosphate pathway, which I mentioned earlier. In other words, if you've got underlying metabolic issues, your blood xylitol levels might go up even if you're not chewing anything sweet. So the elevated xylitol levels in the study might not be telling us what the people were eating. It might be just a clue on what's happening deeper in the body, like the impaired glucose processing or chronic inflammation. And if that's true, then xylitol is just a bystander in the story, not the main actor. And here's the part that we need to keep in mind. The study didn't collect dietary data on xylitol, no logs, no dosages, no brand names. We don't know if the people were using dental products uh, with it, eating it in foods, or producing it endogenously. And we're missing the input part here. We only see the output. And that's a major limitation when you try to draw conclusions uh, about cause and effect. Because if someone's blood xylitol is high and they have a stroke, was it the xylitol or was it the fact that they had poor blood sugar control and their body was already under strain? All right, so let's zoom out for a second here. Because at this point, you might be thinking, I use xylitol gum after meals. Should I stop? And that's a fair question. So here's my take as a dentist and as someone who's followed the research carefully. So I don't routinely recommend xylitol to every patient, but I also don't avoid it myself. I know many dentists who would recommend it, especially in preventative care, because for decades, xylitol has been shown to be one of the few tools that we've had uh, that is non-invasive, that actually works to reduce cavities because it helps neutralize oral pH, it starves cavity causing bacteria and reduces the acid exposure between meals, especially when used in gum or mint right after eating. And we've been using it this way for a very long time in children, adults, and even in public healthcare settings. Now, that doesn't mean that it's perfect. The new cardiovascular research is worth paying attention to, but we've got to put things into context here because most of the risk signals we're seeing comes from very high risk patients, people with obesity, diabetes, prior heart issues, blood levels, not chewing habits, and lab conditions that don't reflect real life. In other words, we don't have enough evidence that's that normal occasional xylitol use like a piece of gum after meals is harmful. That's not just my opinion, that's what the researchers themselves wrote about, that more studies are needed and that isn't a reason to panic or to avoid using xylitol altogether. Again, I'll link the full paper down in the description and like anything in health, context matters. So in this next video, I'll break down also what xylitol actually does where it comes from, how it works in your mouth, and how to use it smartly. And if you've never really understood why dentists recommend it, or if you've only seen it on gum labels, that video will make it all click. I'll link it right there in the description. And thank you for watching.